Good afternoon, this is Dr. K, Karen Rainford, and what I'm going to do today is talk to you about how to go from um, scope in Microsoft Word to scope in Microsoft Project. So here we go. What I'd like to do is make this as simple as possible. And one of the reasons that I keep scope and schedule so different is that um, the work breakdown structure and what comes from where is a, ser a source of confusion from pe for people. Part of the reason for that is because it's done differently in every organization. But one of my concerns is that as you leave this capstone program, there's a likelihood that you are going to go out and take the um, PMP exam or the CAPM exam or the Agile exam, one of them, and that you'll want to be um, up to date on how PMI sees it in the PMI framework. So let's talk about that. So Mohsen Altai has given us the, um, the opportunity to use his project, um, which is a one month long project of serving meals um, to 300 people every night at sunset for um, 30 nights in a row. So we're going to take his work breakdown structure that he has here and get that into Microsoft Project. So first, let's look at it and make sure that this makes sense from a um, deliverables perspective. It seems to me that there's financial, which has to do with all of the monetary aspects of managing this big project, logistic and volunteers, which is getting the people to actually do the cleaning, actually do the food serving of the food, and um, coordinating all the volunteers. And then there's food service, um, and that's actually cooking water and tea and getting the food there. Um, there's a different kind that's pre-processed food, which apparently comes from a different group than um, where the other part comes from. I don't need to understand this. I just need to know that the project manager organized it this way. And the reason that they organize it this way is because there is one person who's in charge of financial, and all of the budgetary items from financial come from that person. There's another person who's in charge of planning everything to do with logistics and volunteers. And then, and they have a budget. And then there's another budget for the food. And so we want to respect the budgetary um, makeup when we develop a work breakdown structure. So all we need to do is go into Microsoft Project and enter these items in order. We'll start with the top one and we'll work from the top left to the bottom right. And so first we'll enter this one and then this and the two things under it. Next, we'll enter logistics and the three things under that, then food service and the three things under that. Now, the way that I've done this is to simply put them all in a, one column in Microsoft Excel, because I know that all of the Microsoft things play well with each other. So I can simply take everything that I put in Excel from left to right, bottom, top to bottom, and take that over to a brand new Microsoft project sheet and not that one. And I'm simply going to um, paste. When I paste those in, I notice that it starts worrying about dates, but I don't care about dates because I'm working on um, work breakdown structure here. Um, so I'm going to add a column it's actually just going down and finding a column that's sitting around and sticking it in. And that's going to be my work breakdown structure column. So I insert that. And right now, because everything is left justified, Microsoft Project sees it as all the same level. Well, I know that we always want everything in my project to be over one from the very top one. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to take the subtasks of financial management and move those over one as well. 
um, so that it, I start getting some, um, some sequencing here. And as I do that, you'll notice that Microsoft Project has taken care of um, putting in the work breakdown structure for me. So let's see how that looks. So the way I like to check that is to go to the View tab, go to Outline, and see what all is at level one. Now, PMI calls this level zero in a work breakdown structure, but um, in this case, it just shows as the, in the outline, it's shown as a level one. That's the very lowest level or highest level that Microsoft Project has. So um, we're going to use the Microsoft Project words for it. So there's my level one. Here's my level two. 1.1, 1.2, and 1.3. And then I can also see um, if I went to show all subtasks, then it would show me everything at all levels. One of the things that I notice is missing here is project management. Now it's possible that project management belongs somewhere in these logistics or coordination, but I really don't want the project manager to be hidden under logistics and volunteers. And so I'm going to um, add that one in and make that one be its own. Microsoft Project puts things at the lowest, at the level of the um, task right above. So I'm going to have to outdent um, that task to get it over to the right level. So now it's 1.4. And then I could put things like um, here, like I could put the uh, initiating work um, as one of the deliverables, and I could put the planning, but I'd have to indent that. And I could put the um, planning work as another thing. So um, that's where I am so far. Now you'll notice in the Gantt chart view when you look at the task mode column, this little um, thing means that it's an automatically scheduled task. That means that Microsoft Project puts it in the earliest day possible. And I'm not going to start scheduling yet, but there are some key milestones that also were called out right away in the project charter. So I want to make sure that those are in my project as well. So here are some of those projects. One of them is, um, the date that um, Ramadan starts. And um, the, another one is the day that Ramadan ends 30 days later. And because those are actual dates, well, first of all, they're milestones. And so I'm going to make it a zero day um, part. So see over here, that became a milestone instead of being a real thing. The other thing that I want is, um, is a date that the um, project charter is approved. And I don't know what date that's going to be yet. That's definitely something that's going to um, actually be probably the date that most of my things start on. So I'm going to just go ahead and make it a milestone the day that the project charter is approved. And that means that task number 18 or row 18 here is going to be a very important row as my scheduling goes on because most things are going to be scheduled out from the date that the project charter is approved. Now the only other thing I notice is that these seem to be um, at one level too high. So I'm going to move them over. But that's what I have. The difference between initiating work is that this will have a beginning when we start doing initiating, and it'll have an end. And the actual milestone that has zero duration is the date that the project charter is approved. That'll be the day that the initiating work ends. But I'm not going to worry about getting the milestones in any particular order with anything um, because at this point, we're just really looking at 
milestones and um, this. And I'm just going to go up to view once again and filter by just um, milestones. And I can see only the milestones in my project. That's all that I'm going to do in terms of scope planning, but I want to show you why I do it, choose to do it in Microsoft Project rather than doing it in Microsoft Word. So here's my first issue. It turns out that there's actually something called transportation um, that's also a part of logistics. And if I add it in here, Microsoft Project will take care of renumbering for me and making everything smooth. So um, I would prefer to um, work in creating my work breakdown structure in the first place in here. And then what I tell people is when you create your, um, your visual for it, for the work breakdown structure, only put in level zero or level one and level two um, when you create your visual. But then you can always go ahead and create a table um, of your work breakdown structure and look at it in table format. And the way that you would do that is by going over here to Microsoft Project, simply copying in these two columns, your um, your work breakdown structure and your um, task name column, and then going back to Word, and you can make a very pretty little table that has all of your work breakdown um, there. That means that you never have to worry about um, about keeping track of it both places, because you can, um, if you make a change over in Microsoft Project. Let's say that I actually decide to spell transportation um, correctly. It would be just as simple to um, go over and just recopy my table rather than going back in and keeping it in two places. So I simply make my um, Microsoft Project file my master and no matter what else I've done, I've always got my work breakdown structure there um, in a way that I can display easily. So I hope you find that helpful. Next week, we're going to talk about scheduling and putting in milestones and making this actually be a working Microsoft Project schedule. Thank you, and have a great week.